Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. So I'm excited you're here. And right now, if you're watching this vlog as it's being released, we're in the middle of the annual Food Freedom launch. So this is a time when we release the Food Freedom Masterclass series. It's a series of three videos. And uh, then there's a fourth video that explains the boot camp. But the three videos that have all the sort of content in them, they are essentially the unit on the neuroscience of food addiction that I used to teach in my college course on the psychology of eating when I was a tenured psychology professor teaching college courses every semester. Um, back in 2016, I think I handed back tenure and uh, jumped into doing this uh, because I didn't have time at all to do both and raise my three kids, so I had to make a choice. But anyway, I used to teach this college course on the psychology of eating, and um, I lamented um, sort of not teaching that stuff anymore because it's really important information that I think needs to get out into the world. So I put together this video series and started releasing it online, and that is what we continue to release uh, at least once a year. And right now it's out. And it reminded me because in the comments underneath, we're getting this question over and over again. And I got it several times on a Facebook Live that I did during this big um, food freedom festivities time. And it's this question that I have never answered in a vlog, which is, ridiculous, hundreds of vlogs I've shot now. And the question is, can you eat fruit in Bright Line Eating? Can, for those who are around here who know, yes, you can eat fruit, that's the short answer. Yes, you can eat fruit. But people want to know why. Once they've seen video one in the Masterclass series that explains how sugar and flour affect the brain, and that video talks about insatiable hunger and overpowering cravings and talks about how um, two main systems in the brain get dysregulated by sugar and flour. One is the system that causes cravings, and that's the dopamine addiction reward pleasure pathway in the brain. And what happens with dopamine is that it gets downregulated when you eat you know, sugar, flour, processed foods. It floods that area of the brain with dopamine and the receptors kind of go, okay, that's really excessive. We don't need that much stimulation around here. And they, they thin out, they become less numerous, less responsive. And then you've got like really a paltry, meager dopamine response when you're eating normal food or engaging in normal activities and you need like really, you know, um, amazingly, uh, you know, convenience store, movie theater, snack bar kind of food to just to feel satisfied, just to feel normal again. So that's the dopamine system. I also talk about uh, leptin resistance, which is the system that's making us eat and never feel full. Just eat and eat and eat like it's just a black hole where we could just keep pouring more food in. What's up with that? Why? You know, some people out there feel full when they eat a regular amount of food, and some of us don't. That's leptin resistance. We're we're missing um, the brain is missing the ability to see the hormone leptin that says you're full. You've had enough to eat now. Our brains just don't see it, and that's because the leptin is being blocked. So sugar and flour cause both of that both of those systems to be hijacked. So people are wondering, well, what do you mean by sugar? And the answer is, well, by sugar, we mean all added sweeteners. So we mean artificial sweeteners, and we mean sugar, and we mean all the different forms of sugar that get added to things. So all the dextrose and the maltose, anything ending in O-S-E, and we mean the maltodextrin, which is just chains of um, dextrose molecules, just chains of sugar molecules, and we mean, um, honey and molasses and maple syrup and agave and stevia. I'm sorry, we mean all those things. There's a couple of systems happening. One is that um, one is that the glucose insulin system gets hijacked when you eat added sugars. Um, so uh, they they get absorbed by the gut lining really fast. They spike blood sugar and then the system responds by dumping a bunch of insulin into the system to bring down blood glucose. And um, that over time becomes really problematic. And um, we're also looking at the dopamine receptors in the nucleus accumbens that I was just talking about before. And 
Alas, the sweet taste buds on the tongue have a direct connection to those addiction centers in the brain, releasing that dopamine. So it's a very legitimate question. Why doesn't the sweet taste of fruit on the tongue cause that? And the, the answer is, it might a little bit, but it's okay. So here's the full answer. The sugar, the fructose in whole real fruit gets mitigated hugely by the fiber in whole real fruit. Fiber is amazing. And I mean the, the fiber in whole real foods. I don't mean fiber tabs. I don't mean, you know, uh, fiber added back into processed bars. Research shows that processed foods with added fiber back in do not have the protective effect, effect of eating whole real food with real fiber, but fruit, all fruits, I've looked this up, every fruit I can think of, all real whole fruits come with this amazing complement of not just fiber, but both, an ample amount of both soluble and insoluble fiber. Now this is important because what creates the barrier in the digestive system that keeps your food from rushing in to your bloodstream and spiking your blood sugar really fast, the barrier is created by a combination of soluble and insoluble fiber. So let me describe how that works. It's kind of like if you, if you were stranded on a desert island and you needed to build a, a shelter, like a hut, that you would hope would keep out the afternoon thunderstorm rains, right? you would probably go gather a couple of things. You would gather a whole bunch of palm fronds, like these um, you know, long, stick, twiggy, reedy-like things, right? Um, and they would form a lattice of, of your roof, right? And then you would go get some packing mud and you would like stick it in there and that's what would make it really um, waterproof, ideally, right? So soluble and insoluble fiber work the same way. The insoluble fiber, insoluble, it's not soluble, it's not dissolvable. Those are the palm fronds, those are the reeds or the bamboo shoots or the, the twigs that you're using to form the thatched uh, hut roof, right? Now, that's what the insoluble fiber does. The soluble fiber is soluble, it's dissolvable, and it's the packing mud, right? It's, it becomes like, like, like mud, and, and you stick it up in there. And those two together form this incredible barrier that keeps the fruit sugar from rushing into the bloodstream. And when the fructose is sort of digested over a long, long, long period of time, it doesn't have the same, the same impact. Now, what about the effect on the tongue? Well, I wanna say a couple of things about that. Um, one is that all of these effects, like the effect of every drug, frankly, is dose dependent, dose dependent, which means like some, can, some isn't gonna have the same effect as a lot. I would never recommend that someone sit down um, and eat a whole pineapple and nothing else with it. That would not be good for your brain uh, in this way and that would not be good for your bright line eating journey. However, eating six ounces of pineapple at a meal, which is the only way you can eat it on the bright line eating food plan, on the weight loss plan, you would have a, a serving of fruit either at breakfast or lunch. In maintenance, a lot of people also would get a serving of fruit at dinner, okay? So we're talking about one or two or three servings of fruit max in bright line eating and always at a meal. So this is the critical part um, for really the whole dynamic, which is that eaten with a meal, there's a lot of protective effect happening there as well. Now, all that said, pineapple is very sweet on the tongue and it is a pretty intense, even with the fiber that comes with it, it's pretty sweet, right? Pineapple is up there in sweetness. Now, there are some people who just say in bright line eating, they can't eat pineapple, right? Or some of the other fruits that are super sweet, like red grapes, for example. Um, there are people who find that those foods impact them and they 
they can feel it in bright line eating as their system gets really clean and they choose to avoid them. There, there are lots of foods that impact some people in adverse ways. In bright line eating, the food plan is sort of, um, you know, it plays on the law of averages and it just sort of says, well, here's a template that really works for most people. The average person will be fine with this. And then some people need to eliminate some foods because they're just too problematic. Um, sometimes that'll be because of uh, insulin dysregulation um, and sometimes it's really a taste bud issue. Um, I want to make a point here about fruit, which is in Bright Line Eating, we don't eat fruit juice and we don't eat dried fruit. Both of them are modified and concentrated, like the sweetness is concentrated in ways uh, that just aren't good. I mean, if you need an example, you know, um, try eating 12 apricots, whole fresh apricots, 12 of them. Most people will give up after three um, or four. Uh, but now imagine eating 12 dried apricots easy to imagine, right? Um, so there's science also, if you look at fruit, there's uh, published papers and you can find these on Dr. Greger's website, I believe, nutritionfacts.org. Um, there's uh, research looking at the blood sugar impact of drinking a glass of orange juice versus just eating a whole fresh orange, right? And it's just, not even close. The fruit juice spikes blood sugar really high and just eating uh, an orange hardly creates a big spike at all. It's just a just a, a hump there, which is exactly what you're looking for when you're eating real food. That's that's what it should look like. So there's a huge difference, right, between fruit juice and fruit, between dried fruit and fruit. There's a huge difference. So no dates, no raisins. So if you're wondering what you can eat in Bright Line Eating, you can absolutely eat whole, real fruit. And there's some ways that, that it's sort of worked into a meal. It's always weighed and measured. You're not gonna eat a whole watermelon. Um, and, uh, and it's really fine for most people. I just wanna say one last thing, which is I think that um, there's a sort of uh, food fatty type term that circulates really widely these days that uh, I'm not a fan of. I often say I'm not really someone to have a pet peeve. I'm not um, super easily annoyed by things in general. I kind of chuckle at, you know, all the things people say and do all around the world. Like it's whatever, you know, people do what they do. Um, but this one bugs me. And the reason it bugs me is, it beca is because it creates so much misunderstanding and so much poor, fuzzy thinking. Uh, so I have this word that bothers me. I, I, I really, really, really don't like this word. It bothers me a lot because I think it's causing harm. And someone who's watching this video who may be Googled, can you eat fruit and bright line eating, probably has been exposed to this word and harmed uh, by this word. And the word, are you ready? You wanna know my word that I just, I really hate, I really hate this word. You ready? The word is carbs, carbs. I hate the word because it's such an unhelpful word, right? It's short for carbohydrates, but when someone says carbs, they don't mean carbohydrates. They mean like, you know, white bread and stuff like that, right? It's like, it's the, pro it's the sugar and flour, it's the processed, it's the processed food that's a problem. It's the processing that does it. It's not carbohydrates. So we have people out there who are afraid to eat carrots. We have people who are afraid to eat bananas, afraid to eat apples, right? And it's, it's in part due to that word. It creates an unhelpful category. In Bright Line Eating, our categories are vegetables, fruits, proteins, fats, grains, right? These are our categories. And it's just much more helpful to think of whole real foods as fitting into these categories. And then there's all the food we don't eat, which aren't really foods. They're processed Franken foods. They're, they're, um, they're, they're not things that grow out of the ground or, you know, are harvested or, you know, that people uh, ate a thousand years ago. They're, they're manufactured industrial ingredients and industrial products. They're manufactured like sneakers are manufactured, you know, in huge factories with big machines from 
unpronounceable, you know, chemical ingredients. They're not foods, right? So I want people to be avoiding processed foods and eating whole real foods. Yes, you can eat fruit in Bright Line Eating. There's, there's not at this moment that I can think of any whole real food that we don't eat in Bright Line Eating. We eat food in Bright Line Eating, all the food. We eat the food, all the food. That's what we eat in Bright Line Eating. Yes, you can eat fruit in Bright Line Eating. And you know, it'll, it'll be okay. My, my guess is it'll be okay. There's, there's gonna be some folks out there watching this who will know, you'll know who you are, who are like, yeah, I, at least right now, you might not be able to you know, tolerate something like six ounces of pineapple, even with a meal. But um, you might get there. You might find that your system, uh, especially your insulin glucose sensitivity system, really heals to the point where at some point you can, or it just might never be advisable. But berries, absolutely. Apples, absolutely. Yes, you can eat fruit in Bright Line Eating. That's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.